Is it possible to defy fate? Is it possible to erase one's past and start a new beginning? Well, let me tell you my story, and you may decide. I was Theodora, an infamous actress. In those days, actress meant courtesan or whore, depending upon what class you were. <laughs> but I managed to become the empress of the Byzantine Empire. But let me go back a bit. This was in the 6th century. My father was an animal and bear trainer for the Hippodrome. Now the Hippodrome was this magnificent edifice that would hold 30,000 people. Now races were held there, chariot races, circus. When you say the word Hippodrome, this is what it means in modern times. Now that space is still in Istanbul, and it was Constantinople at the time. Now my father died and left my mother with three little girls to support. Now in those days there weren't a lot of choices of occupations for women. So my mother said, you guys are going on the stage. So I wasn't more than five years old when my career began. And I was obviously a prostitute before I was a teenager. But I created an act. It was combined with pantomime, <clears throat> comedy. It was really pornographic, rather vulgar. But I had no considerations on showing a little skin. And I was hugely successful. And after a few years of this, I became the mistress of a wealthy man, and I moved out of Constantinople. But when I came back, I passed through Alexandria, and I found Christianity. So I came back to Constantinople, and I became a spinner of wool, if you can believe that, after being an actress. <laughs> it was at this point that I met Justinian. He was the emperor in waiting for the throne. And he had a mad attraction to me, because I was quite beautiful at the time. And he <coughs> passed a law that allowed him to marry me. Because men of his class could not marry actresses. We were the lowest. So we were married to the amazement and shock of other people and envy of some. So then I got a major makeover. You have to envision this. I had a crown that was gold like this, but it was all gold coins to make me taller. I was small in stature. A long white gown and a purple robe. This was called power dressing at that time. <laughs> but I also contributed intelligence, political acumen, and courage. So we started out, and I was able to make changes for women. For example, during this time, divorce laws were terrible. Property laws were bad. Unwanted infants were left out in exposure to die. There was corruption in the government. And women had very little choice in occupation, so I arranged for have convents for ex-prostitutes so they could work and survive. So I'm sure I did many things that were less than good, but those were my specialties. And my husband totally respected me, and we became a duel, a total team. Then there was an uprising. Now, they told you about the Hippodrome. <clears throat> What they had were races there. There were four teams sponsored by political parties in the Byzantine Roman Senate. Well, I won't go into details, but they got into a big riot. Mm -hmm. And they wanted to get rid of my husband. And he was ready to flee the country. And I said, um, you're going to do what? <laughs> and he was so taken back by my caustic attitude, that he got his act together. And I explained to him, we're all going to die, we know that, but we might as well die wearing the purple and with dignity. And this impressed him enough that he got back into command. So he went to talk to his troops who were not able to control the uprising, 
and all of a sudden they can make shish kebab out of 30,000 riders. <laughs> <laughs> so we were back in power. So in essence, I feel that I helped to save our empire. The next thing that tested our ability, you might say, was a great plague. Now this was Constantinople, which is now Istanbul. Up to 10,000 people a day were dying. And my husband was hit by this. But I had a strong will. There's no way this man was going to die. So I nursed him myself. I would have been furious had he left me. So miraculously, we survived all that. Some of the other good things that we did because of our location being on a trade route with Asia and Europe and North Africa was to spread the Greek culture and Roman law. The legal systems today in most of the Western countries are based on Roman law. Now we were the eastern part of Rome. The western part had lost this earlier. And we, we survived until 1500s. Not us, but our empire. Well, after surviving all this, I ended up with cancer. And if you look back in more recent history, there was another woman who began as an actress, slept her way to power, became the first lady of Argentina, Eva Perón. Oh, yeah. And this was 1,400 years later. So her song was, Don't Cry For Me, Argentina. So might have been, my might have been, Don't Cry For Me, Bicentennial. Yeah. So what I ask you is, do you feel it is possible to defy fate? Do you feel we can change our lives and erase our past? I leave you with that decision. I know it's possible. Madam Toastmaster. Wow. Wow.